You want to learn a hot skill that employers are looking for? Or want to take your career to the next level with a new course? Whatever your needs are, Uplots has got you covered. Uplots is an online learning platform with over 2,000 courses and has trained 40k students across 50 countries. Uplots is powered by 3,000 plus highly skilled tutors holding an average experience of 10 plus years with real-time practical knowledge of their fields. Plus, it is rated 5 star on Google reviews too. Being a leading training organization, Uplots provides courses in IT, SAP, Oracle, Python, Digital Marketing, Google Cloud Platform, Salesforce, DevOps, and Analytics. How Uplots works. Uplots conducts courses via two modes, one, instructor-led online training in a virtual classroom. Two, self-paced training with pre-recorded videos. All classes in instructor-led training are recorded and shared with students to facilitate learning, anytime, anywhere. Plus, Uplots provides professional course certificate too, to boost your CV. And the best part, Uplots courses are very affordable. So, jump on the bandwagon of a high-flying IT career today at training.uplots.com. Hi, hello everyone. I'm here. I'm a tutor of Uplets. I'm here to uh, teach you about MongoDB and this is a video by Uplets. So to know more about us, uh, you just, you can uh, see our website, which I have given in my uh, presentation and you can contact us to know more about us. So first we can uh, see the, what are the uh, topics we are going to cover today. Today. So here are the table of contents. So today we are going to see about introduction, uh, what is MongoDB and why we need to use. So what are the difference uh, between MongoDB and SQL and in how to in install and configure the MongoDB on our local machine and occurred operations. So what are the advantages to use a MongoDB and data modeling? So basically, so before starting, before start to learn about MongoDB, we need to have uh, at least uh, 20 to 25 percentage of knowledge about SQL. So it should be good so that we can learn easily uh, the MongoDB course. So it will be like we can able to easily understand the terms behind the MongoDB. So like uh, MongoDB, uh, so it is derived from the word humongous. So it is like humongous means huge and enormous. So that is the meaning of the word. So they, this is the only reason they derived uh, because it is like we can able to scale our data very fast and we can able to store a large amount of data. So that is why the MongoDB is derived from the word humongous. So uh, it, it has been developed on 2007 uh, by the Newark based company called Tengen. And so they have been uh, started to develop this data more database during the development of Microsoft Azure as a uh, they have doing a platform as a service on Microsoft Azure. So, and then now the company has changed their name to a MongoDB uh, corporation from the tangent. So initially they was focusing uh, building on platform as a service, but in later 2009, so they have been uh, make uh, MongoDB as open source to the market and they have made, uh, they are maintaining the MongoDB in their organization itself. So this is uh, some of the brief history. And uh, this is what the first company who have used this database to store their newspaper images. So this is the first company and they have developed and they have changed their name from tangent to MongoDB. And now they are make a MongoDB to open source to the market and they know uh, using by the organization is itself. So the first version was released on 2010 for production and later, so now we have a version up to 4.2, I think. So the stable version is like 2.4. So, and the MongoDB is like a cross platform. So the cross platform means you can install a MongoDB in any of the platform, like Windows, Linux, whatever platform you are using, it is open to all of the platform. So it is basically called as a no SQL. So if you know SQL, you may hear this word no SQL. It is like not only SQL or non-structured query language. So the, basically the data here, we stored in a form of a documents and inside the document is going to be stored in a form of a JSON format. So JSON format is nothing but a uh, key value pass. So, and it have been uh, popularly used in financial sectors, government, retail, so in all of our real time day to day life, so government and finance sectors or day, day by day to day life, they are using this MongoDB. And it has been uh, companies like Google, Flipkart, Robert Bosch. So they are the major users of a MongoDB. So like we should know at least 20 to 25 percent of knowledge of SQL. So if you know that, you can easily grasp this course. So like in SQL, we may define database. So the in MongoDB also it is a database. In SQL we may call tables. In MongoDB we need to call as collections. So table here we are using the term collection. 
and in sql we will use inside the table we will have n number of rows and in mongodb inside our collection we will have n number of documents in the form of a json format or bson bson is nothing but a binary form a representation of a json so and inside the tables we will have n number of columns and in mongodb we will have in a field and in that field we will have key value pairs so we can see in upcoming uh, sessions what is that uh, field and what is key value pair and other stuff so we uh, no sql database we have four types so column or row database document database graph database and key value pair database so we can see what are the popular no sql database we have so one is cassandra so this is the first no sql database and they have used uh, big data and hadoop are using this and it uh, like second one is hbase so hbase data no sql database is have been used by facebook and they are using column database and the third one is mongodb uh, so mongodb is like we have already have a basic introduction about this this is one of the no sql database and this is a document based database another uh, fourth one is big table so big table is like brain of the google we can say like this this is the brain of google and here also they are using a column database and dynamo this is a cloud aws and the values are storing in a form of key value pairs and the fifth one is, sixth one is couch database this is also be, uh, one of big data they are using a and values are stored in a form of a document base and the last and final one is cosmos this is a no sql azure kind of database and next we can see uh, what is mongodb so already the new york based company called tenjen uh, they have made mongodb open source to the market already we have studied so the same way we can say mongodb is a open source database and this is a document oriented data model and the main thing is it is non structured query language so non what is non structured query language so in sql when when you are going to create a table we need to define the structure and basic constraint but in mongodb so the word itself we can say it is a non structured yes so we no need to define any structure to our mongodb so whatever uh, we can insert two columns in one collection and the next document we can insert three so nothing it is a non structured query language and it is the, one of the most powerful no sql system and database around today in our uh, market so it is like a uh, flexible and it is scalability and strong consistency so these are the main key points why we are saying that mongodb is the most powerful no sql database so in the beginning itself we have uh, seen mongodb uh, documents are stored in a form of json the javascript object notation and here the data will be stored in a form of key value pairs so json is nothing but an object nested like key value pairs so you want to study more about json i have given the link in the bottom of the slide you can use and you can uh, know more about json and you can see more example so bson is nothing but so serialized format encoding form of json so json uh, mainly it is used for mainly storing and accessing document and whereas json it is a human readable standard file so this is the main uh, difference so bison is not a serialized format encoding format of json and it is a lightweight we can easily traverse and it is efficient for encoding and decoding so when the human want to read we can easily decode and we want to protect our files and protect our data we can easily decode so this is and we want to know more about bison i have given the link at the bottom of the slide and you can explore what and all the basic examples of json and bison so next we are going to see about architecture so whatever the technology we have we are we have learned so there will be some basic building block of that so that is what we are going to see now so mongodb for sure we will have one server and in that server we need we have some data so that is the data we are going to use in a mongodb and what we are going to do we are going to store our data in a bunch of collections so collection is nothing but the table and it is our repository to store all our documents and the document will be in a form of binary form of json okay so this is a basic building block so we can say uh, inside the collection we will have n number of documents so we can't store excel pdf or xml only json form of documents will be stored inside our repository so you may think why not xml why not a pdf or like word so we need to keep in mind if we store xml or type of documents it will be difficult for us to read or if we need to access some 
some data we need to retrieve we need to change so if we store in a form of xml for sure it is difficult for rest to take so that is the reason uh, mongodb has this basic quality storing a data in a form of json format and it is like it is supported in all types of data types we can store integer you can store string you can store character double n number of database it is supported for all and it is a lightweight uh, one of the lightweight database so why mongodb so at the beginning itself we have seen the mongodb is a document oriented so since it is a no sql database so instead of storing a data in a relational format we are storing it in a document so that it will be very flexible for us to retrieve uh, in a real time examples real time scenarios uh, so we are using this in a business sector so for them it is like very flexible and adaptable for them so that is why it is a document oriented and second one is ad hoc queries so in a real time it is aggregation and it is powerful to access and analyze a data so it is like a uh, it is also support searching by uh, what are the fields we have and we can set a range and we can search and for regular expressions with the help of regular expressions also we can search a data and then we can return the specific field into a document so it is one of the main advantage we can easily search our data inside a document and third one is indexing so it improves the performance of searching like uh, we have a bunch of uh, like uh, we have uh, more than 10000 number of lines inside a document so uh, if it is you may think how we can search in a 10000 line of it is may it may take time or it is difficult so you you don't need to worry if you are using a mongodb as a database so we have a special concept called indexing so it will improve our performance search and the every field inside the document we can index the document and replication so replication means uh like inside a document uh, so in it will automatically assign if we store some particular data in a document so it will automatically set primary replica and secondary replica so um, our server may get down at one point of time so at that time all our uh, doc data will be stored in primary so if that or primary also failed in one point of time it will uh, we'll have a mongodb makes a backup for se a secondary replica set so we can take all our data from the secondary replica set so it is one of the interesting factor in mongodb and finally we have load balancing so mongodb have multiple servers so uh, in some point of time some hardware may got failure so we we may think we need to take a backup for all the data so in mongodb we want we don't want don't want to take a backup so this load balancing will automatically forms a duplicate set of data and when the hardware fails the duplicate data will plays an important role and it may brings all data. so it is one of the main key points so this is why we need to use mongodb we have document oriented adopt queries we have indexing and replication and load balancing as well so then next key components of mongodb architecture so in sql we have a primary id so what is primary id primary key so it is unique and it is used to join the two table so in mongodb as well uh, we have a primary key underscore id so this is an example of that object underscore id and it is n number of uh, letters so second one is collection so what is meant by collection we have already seen table is nothing but the collection so group of database documents if we have a group of documents it is called as collection so this collection will exist in one a single database n number of collection will exist in a single database and no schema is required in our collection we can design our own schema in our own whatever whatever way we, we need to design a schema we can design but there is no restrictions of schema in this so the third one is cursor so if we have one uh, document at the end of that uh, if we if we if we write one query we need a result so the result we need to uh, like we have a cursor the cursor will retrieve the result from that query so it is nothing but a result set of query and the third one is database so database is nothing but the physical container where we can uh, have a files a document so etc so mongodb n number of database we have it will all exist in one particular server and the fourth one is a document so document is like we have a fields name and value so that is a document so what does mean by field so field is a name value pair in a document so you can see the example which i have given in the slide 
customer id is a key and 11 is a value customer name is again a key and guru 99 is a value order id is a key and triple one is a value so this is a, one of the simple example of key value pairs so this is the way we we will insert our data inside the document in the collection in mongodb and we can see what are the advantages so first and foremost main advantage is open source and we uh, open source is, we can also understood so we can download uh, mongodb and we can install in a local machine and it is open to all we can we can use and it is a second one is a document based and it is schema less and it is faster time executing of queries if we have a thousand or more lines it it will execute faster and no sql injection so these are the advantages of mongodb so next we can go to how to install and configure a mongodb in our local machine so i have given on link so in that link you can download mongodb msi installer package so i have uh, put a some on image of that particular view you need to go to server and you need to select what are the what is the os you are using so if it is a window if it is a linux or windows 10 windows 7 whatever and you need to check what is the operating system it is a 64 byte or 32 bit you need to specify that also and in package you need to select msi and then you can download so once download it will uh, in the download you will have you need to double click and run once you click on run you will get the step 2 you need to click on next after that the third step you need to accept the license and then you need to click on next and in step 4 you uh, you will see, you will be able to see a two a boxes complete and custom so we need to we are going to install it locally so we can give on complete the custom is like for advanced users so like uh, we are going to use in a big uh, retail market or like uh, one of the sectors public sectors then we can click select custom so we are not going to do all that so we need to install it locally on our machine you can select complete so step 5 we need to we are going to install mongodb as a service so we need to check that box and the most one of important thing in the installation is you can able to see my in step step 5 image there is a path called data directory so you need to make note of this path so this is a path where a mongodb is going to install in a local machine so you need to make a note of this path this is very important step and step 6 so once everything is done you'll be able uh, we need to install mongodb compass uh, this image will come you need to uh, uncheck the box so we are we are not going to install mongodb compass we are going to install only a mongodb so we need to deselect that box and then click on next so once done the mongodb is set up you need to click on finish button and after that we need to create a two folders inside our local uh, direct local disk c so a uh, data and inside data we need to create db so why we are creating this folder so we we are uh, in once our mongodb is set up in a local directory local machine we will be working with various queries or various commands we will be executing n number of commands so we may get error at one point of time so we if we want a log of that what is the error exactly so everything will be stored inside db path so that is why we are creating a separate folder for a mongodb to store our queries and our log files all our log files will be stored under a db path so we need to create that after that we need to open a command prompt as an administrator so to start our server we need to type run mongodb so so once when you type mongodb server will start you can see the image i have given i'm like mongodb starting server is listening at 2027 or like whatever port your machine is configured so that port you may able to see after that you can think a server gets starts and then next we we need to open another command prompt as administrator and we need to enter mongo so this is the uh, our mongodb terminal so once you enter mongo it will go inside the shell and you can use uh, whatever commands whatever query we need to execute we can execute in the path so this is all about installation and configuration of mongodb next is we are going to see about curd operations so in curd operations we need to know how to create a database or else how how we can use our existing database so there is a simple command we can type db so just type db you can uh, you may able to know what are the database you are currently inside in mongo so just type db i have given an example screenshot of my terminal is like we are in test database and we, uh, you how to list our database inside our mongo like just type show database 
so once you type the true database is tamil you may able to see what all the databases are in our mongo db server you can see admin config local so you can able to switch to the one database to another database as well if you are using a local as of now but you want to switch your database to admin you can use use admin so if you type use admin you may able to switch the database from local to admin as well so next is that is what i have done you, you can able to go to the particular database using use and your db name so use local it is switched to db local so that is what i have done so next is creating database so how we can create a database so in sql we will create a table by uh, using a command like create table what are the steps we will define a schema we will define a primary key constraint foreign key constraint and the size of the data type if it is a string var char like that all other stuff but and it will be defined in a row column format but in no sql database our data will be stored in a form of a document and in a form of json key value pairs so it is called as collections you can see the example mongodb so id is a primary key uh, so while creating a collection we don't want to create a prime uh, id and dot so it will automatically create a primary key for each and every document so that is one of the special thing in mongodb so next is uh, how to create a collection so there is a two ways to create a collection so one is while inserting a data inside our uh, document it will automatically create a collection so we can see how so db my collection is uh, the name which we going to give whatever name you want to create, name for your collection you can give so db the collection name and insert i am as of now i am inserting a uh, three values name age and location so we don't want to uh, put a extra effort to create a collection while inserting itself it will automatically create a collection in our uh, database so the second one is creating a non capped collection so how to create non capped collection so db create collection is a key and my collection is my name of the collection whatever collection we want to create we can create so once after creating the collection we can insert so this is a one uh, one way and the third one is uh, there is a capped collection so capped collection is nothing but we will Uh, define the size max size of our collection if we define two only two documents we will be able to insert whatever the size we are defining so that much size only we will be able to insert inside our documents and we need to specify capped true so if we that is the main thing while creating a capped collection we need to mention capped true so that is all about collection one is while inserting itself it will automatically create a collection or otherwise either using capped or non capped we can create a collection and then we can insert a documents inside our database and the next one is so this is what i have done so capped collection is a, a fixed size collection so that insert and retrieve document will be easier in capped collection and the insertion will be in a form of first in and first out document will maintain this throughout when you have create a capped collection this is how the document get inserted and this is how the document we will able to retrieve the they are using fifo first in first out and one more thing once a collection is filled the allocated space so it will make a room for the next document and it will keep on overwriting so this is one of the main thing in capped collection and this we can say this is one of the main advantage of a capped collection and one more thing we can also able to do is like if you have created uncapped collection but in future i need to uh, convert that to capped uh, so for example i need to have only 100 document inside my collection if i insert 101 i was not able to insert so in that point of time we can convert our non capped to capped so here is the syntax so db dot run command convert to capped we need to give our collection name and we can specify the size of the document whatever we are going to insert so this is all about creating collection and the third one is how we need to insert a data so we can insert a data into a new collection or else we can create a whatever collection we have created before we can also insert a data in that also so this is a like a basic structure how we need to insert the data we can insert as a key value pairs we can insert as an array of strings and we can insert as objects or array of object so the in the particular screenshot i have given the explanation what is array of strings how the object will look how the array of object will look so this is a uh, one of the basic structure how the data will look inside our document or else how we need to insert a data into our document so in uh, inserting also we have a three methods in mongodb so first one is insert one if we use uh, insert one we will be able to insert only a single document into our collection if we use insert many more than one document will get insert so 
if you are not use insert many or insert one just insert we can use uh, as much as document we want to insert so we can see the example of one by one so first one is insert one so this is a, a syntax for insert one so db dot my collection dot insert one i have given two field name and age so here we are using a insert one so only one document will be get inserted in our collection in a form of key value pairs so second one is insert many so insert many uh, like we can insert as much as the data in our document so here i have given two data in our document so first one is name and age and the second one is name age location and third one is name and age so you can see here uh in the first document i have mentioned name and age in the second as well as a name and age but in the third i have introduced a new field called location so this is what i have previously mentioned so it is a non structured query language so whenever you want to introduce a new field into the particular table collection you can introduce so first two documents only have name and age field but the third document i have introduced a new field called location so that we can easily uh, what we can structure our own schema so this is one of the main advantage and this is called a scalability so this is the main advantage of mongodb so after inserting you want to know whether it get inserted or not so this is how we will get a result right result inserted one so i have inserted a one document so it i'm getting a result as one so if you are inserting n number of document using insert many you will get the count as per as you insert so this is all about insert now we are going to see about query data so how we can query all the data from our collection so in sql we, you all you all know about a command called select star from collection so the, that is like we will be able to view our entire table what all the document we have inserted in a form of rows and columns we will be able to see the same thing in mongodb as well as db dot my collection name dot find so this will uh, retrieve all the collections in our documents so all the documents in our collection will be able to view so this, i have given you some screenshot in the slide so db.collection.mine so it will retrieve what all the documents we have inserted before it will retrieve that and it will show so uh, i have already mentioned it is stored in a form of json if we want to view in a clear cleaner manner just use db.collection.find.pretty so it will display in a form of json format you can see uh, i have given a command called db.collection. find dot pretty so how it will display uh, like in a form of a json format so it will be cleaner to view the document uh, in a collection what are the field we have given in one document and in the next document what are the fields available we will be able to view in a cleaner way so this is a one method and next is so already uh, in the previous example you will be, you will seen that underscore id so underscore id i have already mentioned it will create automatically when you insert a document inside the collection it is like a primary field so if you don't want to see that underscore id you can mention like db dot my collection dot find underscore id will be you need to set that underscore id to zero if you query it like this you will not be able to see that field in our collection so this is one of the main key advantage in querying a document so like ah uh, if we need to find our uh, document with the help of a specific field suppose i need to get an document who and all named as john so that uh, particular result alone i need so it is like a filtering so we have we can also query db dot my collection dot find where name is john so in sql the query is will be equivalent to select star from table where name equal to john that this is the same query in the way if we are using in mongodb we can see the result so what what uh, field john alone will be retrieved from the entire document and it will be the result so this is how querying a document so next we are going to see about update methods so we have a four update methods update one update many replace one and update so update one is like uh, it will update a single document based on the specific filter so if we like uh, i need to update a particular field like john age to 50 it will update only the first document which has been shown in entire collection it will update that particular document alone in if we use update many so it will uh, update what are the documents named john in that entire collection it will update all the thing based on the filter so it's the same thing replace one so it will only replace only one document based on the filter and it will match and it will uh, change to only one document so db.collection.update will do 
like what are the filter condition matching condition we have given in our query it will do accordingly either one document or either many document so this is how update works so you can see a simple example for updating documents so db.collection.update uh, i'm going to update age 22 age 23 so i have given update so i have not mentioned anything update one or update many so what this query will do it will go into that particular collection and it will pick all the documents who and all having age 20 and it will change to 23 this is how this update command will works if you give update one it will take a very first document which ever it's seen and it will change to age 23 if you give update many so it will take what all the documents will have age 20 and it will change all the documents to age 23 so this is all about uh, today's session so in the next class we can uh, we can see how to uh, uh, delete a document and some of the practical examples so if you have any doubt in this particular session you can uh, to the info@uplets.com so this is all about today's session thank you and see you on my next session